I am going to talk to you about Gunditan Pirate today, which is Finnish version of Inbox slash Candle Mass. So, all of my viewers who celebrate Inbox or Candle Mass, Blessed Inbox and Candle Mass, <laughs> or Hyvä Gunditan Päivä. So, uh, if I start with Inbox, I guess most of my you <laughs> viewers know that Inbox is originally a Druidic festival to celebrate Goddess Bridget. It's an Irish festival of light, and uh, Bridget she is the goddess of, goddess of the sun, goddess of life, goddess of fire and inspiration and motherhood and all kinds of cool things. So that is in bulk, and then also around. Europe, there are different celebrations taking this time of the year between the 1st and the 2nd of February and usually they are related to gods and goddesses who represent fertility or sun and uh, life and new life. So uh, then <laughs> when the people started to be converted into Christianity in the early Middle Ages, that is when uh, priests, <laughs> the church, created a celebration of their own called Candle Mass. And with Candle Mass, people just wanted to convert uh, the pagans to Christianity. So when in bulk was the celebration, pagan festival of light, now it just became Christian slash. Catholic festival of light and that's what candle mass literally means a mess where you light up candles so anyway this celebration the pagan version it did not necessarily exist in Finland before Christianity arrived we don't have any kind of written records of people celebrating Guttilan Päivä before it uh, arrive in its Christian form, but it is really possible that people somehow celebrated sun and the light coming back in February, but we don't really have any kind of written records about this. So uh, when Finland was uh, converted into Catholicism from Paganism, that happened in the early Middle Ages. So Finland was still back then part of Sweden and the king of Sweden, the last Viking king, whose name I cannot again remember, when he was converted into Catholicism, that is when all these Catholic holidays also arrived to Finland. But the thing is with candle mass, that did not only bring the Christian aspect and ways to celebrate it, for the pagan folk, it also brought the pagan aspects that already existed in the uh, original pagan holiday <laughs> because Candle Mass it is really based on in bulk and different ver versions of it around Europe. So that is how Gentinapaida arrived to Finland, both Christian and pagan elements. So, uh, February in Finnish is Helmiku, which means a month of pearls. Isn't that pretty? Helmi is a pearl in Finnish. And the name comes from that in February in Finland. Uh, the snow, it shines, uh, it shimmers and glitters when the sunbeams touch it. Uh, they look like tiny pearls the snow that is a little, starting to melt a little bit. So that is where the name Helmiku comes, which means uh, the brewery. I always thought that was really pretty. But the thing is, even though we don't have like uh, written information that people did, didn't or did or didn't celebrate this pagan version before it uh, arrived, the, Candle Mass arrived to Finland, but we do have stories how he, around February in Lapland and in Finland the people, they when the 
as first sunbeam started to arrive and the sun was seen in the sky at least for one moment people they gathered to big groups and they went to a very wide space into ice or or to the beach that was all like snowy or to the fields to see the sun the little glimpses of the sun and welcome back the sun and in Lapland uh, there are stories that people actually took lots of like um, pans and cattle and drums and went to drum for the sun keep lots of noise because they were so happy that sun was coming back so I think that is the way people did celebrate in bulk in bulk in Finland back in the pagan times and um, of course in Finland we have a time period called Kalmus which starts in October and ends in February and it means that the more north you go in Finland the less you can can see the sun and uh, it's like uh, dark 24 7 it's like I'm from northern Finland uh, when I was a kid when I went to school in like in December it was dark when I got back from school it was dark again so sun was out, out when I was having a lunch time pretty much and it's the same with the summer uh, it's the land of the midnight sun because sun doesn't go down at all so it's the same thing so <laughs> in that sense uh, celebrating in bulk in Finland was has been very different compared to other parts of Europe in, in that sense and um, also sorry reading my notes here and that, of course, it depended a lot which part of the country you lived. And uh, Finland it is quite a wide country. And um, like the whole symbol, symbolism that, like here in the Britain, is connected to Bridget, and in Wales and in Ireland, like the snowdrops and uh, and uh, lambs and sheep and. Uh, getting ready to start farming and all that like we didn't ha uh, have have that in Finland in the pagan times obviously because it was still snowy and if you go to more north in, more north in Finland the snow really starts to, sm to melt around April so it really has been very different and I guess that's why I really like to spend separate and March here because I really love seeing all the flowers coming up because in Finland I would have to wait until May before the flowers start to pop up so it's quite nice so there was this uh, superstitions related to Kynteli or Kynteläntäivä which means the day of the candle and one of these was that people should not do any kind of housework when it was Kuntinapaya. You can ask if this was a Christian belief or pagan belief. Uh, I guess it was both. It was believed to bring bad luck uh, to do housework around that day. Women were, weren't allowed to knit or sew or uh, weave and men were not allowed to make very hard <laughs> works like chop, chop firewood or anything people were supposed to relax and take it easy which sounds very good and some typical food foods for Gunther and Paiva they were uh, candle porridge <laughs> or light porridge and different kinds of soups and then people ate lots of uh, fatty food, fat foods. I think that's quite common in Finland, in, around, especially on, around fin winter time. People ate lots of, lots of meat. <laughs> and um, there was one very interesting superstition or pagan belief that I found. That was to gather ash from the sauna and bless the ash and then uh, cover the take the forgetting the words wool 
wool from the sheep and then uh, paint, uh, paint the cover of the skin of the sheep with that ash after the ash had been blessed and it was believed that when people did this the sheep they would stay very healthy I really like that and of course sheep it is also one symbol of of uh, Bridget but I think the uh, sheep overall they're very connected to spring anyway no matter where you are so this was the story of Kirtil and Paila in Finnish Pagan Wheel of the Year so Blessed in bulk and candle mass and Kimpton and Baba to all of you. I'll see you on my next video. Bye!